Hey everybody, welcome to Peppermint and Tobacco, a YouTube channel all about home fragrance, including candles. Today I have a video how you can reuse a large candle jar and make it into a great floral arrangement. Stay tuned. Thanks everybody for coming on back. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hopefully you're here because you like content about home fragrance, including candles. And to those of you who are old friends, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. So y'all know I'm obsessed about recycling my candle jars. I think that you know it's an important part of um, you know having candles as a hobby to be sure that we do our very best uh, to recycle those jars and make as uh, the m like the smallest environmental impact as we can and so recycling the jars is a great way or reusing the jars is a great way um, to reduce our impact so today I'm going to show you how to use a candle jar as a great container for a floral arrangement so those of you who are planning a wedding or planning an event or might have events throughout the year and you're always searching for a vase or you can't seem to ever find one or you want to have one that's a cheapo to give away without putting more money into your floral arrangement uh, candle jars make great containers and so I have two jars here I think one of these was a Yankee candle jar and another one was a Kringle candle the country candle um, line from Kringle large jar and so both of them I have um, some cool water and uh, I prepared it by using um, some flower food. So you get this flower food at, when you buy your flowers. It comes in these little packs that are often attached to the stems. And so I just sprinkled a little bit in there and then put some water in. I didn't put the water in all the way. I probably will fill this up even more once I have the flowers arranged. What I was trying to avoid is having the water spill out. <clears throat> so uh, I put a little bit of water in there. I've got some tools ready. So uh, I'm learning to use a floral knife. Uh, but what I didn't want to do is like cut myself on on video so I'm gonna use scissors okay scissors are fine to use y'all probably have those around and uh, uh, these uh, trimmers I've got some larger pieces of greenery in here and I might need these to help uh, snip that greenery so normally I don't use um, those trimmers and I also have um, Crowning Glory. This is a product by Floral Life, and I use it on my uh, flower arrangements at the end it provides a wax seal um, to cover the flowers and helps them last even longer in arrangements. Um, while I'm <coughs> talking about it, so I have two candles out here. I've got uh, Bath and Body Works uh, rose, uh, rosemary, Bath and Body Works honeysuckle and freesia candle. It's not a strong smelling candle. In fact, it's really weak. I'll put a link to the review of that candle here. And then I've also got uh, Lafka New York's. Um, Duchess Peony Candle and together they're making a nice fragrance in the room. Definitely uh, not overwhelming with the fragrance, but you know, add some, some flower scent into the room. <clears throat> so, oh, and around the corner I have a, a silver plated teapot. So, one of the things that I do is I collect uh, silver plate. Um, it's relatively inexpensive and sometimes this one's got a little ding here. You can find it at antique stores on eBay and stuff. Sometimes it's black. I probably got this for less than five dollars but I think that it makes a great container for flowers and so I probably will have a lot of flowers left over from these two arrangements and so I'm probably going to use this to make a third arrangement. Um, flowers. So I got these flowers earlier today at Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's is a great place to get um, some uh, your flowers. They're relatively inexpensive compared to other places. There's also, if you live in a larger city, you probably have a wholesale flower market or um, like a, a, a farmer's market where you can find some flowers that are fresh and in season. Uh, Trader Joe's is convenient for me. One of the things I really, that's my dog drinking water by the way. I don't want you to think there's weird sounds going on. So one of the things that I like about Trader Joe's is they also have greenery. When you go to the grocery store, oftentimes you can find great flowers um, but you often can't find greenery and greenery really is the thing that helps take your um, arrangements from just okay to looking super profesh and so um, that's one of the reasons why I like Trader Joe's. Um, if I'm shopping uh, at my grocery store I get good prices uh, on some flowers at my grocery store. They sell these bundles that are reasonable for like four bucks and with a couple of bundles I can get a lot and so there's a flower uh, market, a wholesaler um, that like it's like wholesaler slash half retail where I can get leather leaf um, fern I can get 
uh, pittosporum. I can get um, a variety of other greens, and those greens really help me to flesh out arrangements when I'm, I'm making them for either home use for like a dinner party or to give away on Mother's Day, those kinds of things, birthdays. It's so nice to be able to quickly put together an arrangement. Plus, it will save you so much money. So, um, you know, flowers from a florist are expensive and they're expensive for a few reasons. One is a lot of the flowers come from far away. And so um, there's a lot of uh, overhead that florists have. Plus, um, florists, um, it's a dying art, y'all. So go buy some flowers. Um, but I know when I look at uh, flowers online, it's like this small thing, it's like $50. And so um, with a little bit of talent and some time and you know practice, you really can create something that um, will look knockout. So um, I got went a little bit overboard today at Trader Joe's. The thing there is that they tend to have larger bunches, but it's so reasonably priced that you're like, I want a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And so um, I, most of the time, go to Trader Joe's with an open mind. So one of the things that's difficult when you're shopping at like Trader Joe's or the grocery store is that you don't know what you're going to find. And so, you know, I may go um, and see like combinations of colors that I didn't intend, um, but that I find really compelling. And so it's a little bit of a surprise, but if you have something really set in your mind, you know, you probably want to go to a flower shop or a place where you can order those specific flowers ahead of time. I rarely am planning ahead of time and so it's you know luck of the draw when I get to um, Trader Joe's. So I have um, a variety of flowers here from some uh, Asiatic lilies, some lilies. There um, is, uh, this is called stock, this light purple flower. Um, and then there's some, I think these are asters and then these might be just a, a variety of mum or chrysanthemum. I'm not sure what this is here, or what the name of it is. I'm generally pretty good with names, but it's a, another sort of filler plant that has a little bit of a yellow bloom. There's some pittosporum, which is green. And then there are some uh, greens here in the back. I'll bring this, it's like this almost shrub looking thing. And I'm not exactly sure what the, the name of this is, um, but it's gonna help me uh, to create the the um, structure of the arrangement. So I have a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna um, pause for a second. I'm gonna move these candles out of the way so they can have plenty of space to spread out and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna start with our greens and uh, the greens are important because they create the base. And I'm just gonna make uh, one uh, jar to start with and I've got my space cleared off. I'm gonna to try to keep it nice and neat as I go. I've never used um, this uh, material before and so I'm a little bit, I'm not exactly sure how I wanna use it. And so I think what I might do is, um, Let's see, I want it to be about this tall. And then everything that is under, gonna be underwater, you wanna um, just take away. And so I know it looks like I'm taking a ton of stuff or greenery off of this, um, but I'll reuse this in smaller containers in just a little while. And so I'm going to put a little bit of that in there and then I cut it in half and so I'm going to use this other half on the other side. It's pretty tight like the um, it's not got a lot of like movement or grace in the way that that and I'm sort of just making them crisscross a little bit there and the way that the um, jar sort of covers there is so nice because it's sort of holding the um, plants in place. And then just for additional texture and a little bit of something different, I'm gonna add some of this pittosporum. And this is just a, a green uh, pittosporum and I'm gonna take some of these leaves off down. So taking the leaves off that will be underwater helps keep bacteria out of the, the water and keeps, will help keep the water nice and clean because it's the bacteria that um, pollutes the water and will make your flowers wilt more quickly. And so this is a little bit shorter, which is just fine. And so I'm gonna turn it so that it will face out, just like this. So I've created a base of greens there, and then I'm gonna start with my um, focal flower. I might do, da, 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 just a little bit more this pittosporum, like right here. 
there we go. And the thing about arranging in a vase is that you can adjust and adjust, and eventually it will create a base um, that your uh, flowers will lock into. And so one of the things is figuring out the height of your 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 plants that you want to go in. And so I generally do like one and a half times the height of the the vase. And so I'm going to trim this about right here. The thing that y'all want to remember is that you can always recut. You can never add more stem back on. And so, you know, if you cut it too short, then you're in trouble. So I try to um, err on the side of making it too long versus too short to start with. And then you can always take a little bit more off to get it the exact size that you want. And so I've started with my main focal flower here and then I'm gonna um, come back around. I'm gonna look at doing threes and fives. Those are odd numbers, so I've got one, three, five is sort of the way that I'm, I'm going to go about this. And um, using some a variety of flowers here. So I'm gonna start with these um, purple ones. And we might do three sets of three. Um, they're sort of attached here because these are a little bit um, together so I made a little bunch here that's a little bit of a different height and so I'm going to rather than just having one flower be the, the one, I'm using them as a group of three and considering the group of three as a one. Does that make sense? Like, um, that way it will have some mass in the arrangement without it just being one flower just tucked in there. These have a little bit of yellow in the um, eye of the flower and so that is what it's drawing you know, the color through from this yellow lily that's on top. And I'm just sort of eyeballing the height of these and trying to get them not all at the same height. You can see that the stems are at different lengths and that's great because you wanna have, make it look like a live plant and live plants, they're not all at that same height. This one is a little bit too tall. I'm gonna take it down. And spread it out a little bit more here get it down in through these greens I think I missed the hole I did Okay, and now I'm going to do a little bit of these um, yellow chrysanthemums. And so um, they are in these bunches, um, and so that might make it a little bit of a challenge. I might do them again as a bunch. Um, and so since we have the bunches of three in the purple, I may do the bunches of odd numbers in these chrysanthemums. So I'm cleaning up the stems here, getting all of the leaves off, any stems that are not in the way. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven is probably too much, so I'm gonna take a couple of these off. It leaves me with five here, which is just fine. And then I'm gonna tuck the five in like that. And I'm just finding holes in the um, arrangement that um, look like they need a little bit of color. So I'm just sort of using my eye. I'm saving these ones that I'm pulling off because they can go in small little arrangements around the house. Um, let's see again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna pull off three, leave them with five here, get these leaves cleaned off, make a fresh cut and then bring it down. All 
Alrighty. So I'm going to do one more group of yellow. All right, now I'm going to add in some of these um, uh, stock flowers. And so it's a nice contrast to the dark purple, this light purple, and they're just gonna slide in there like that and have a little bit of height, but be tucked down in. So they're not in the best shape. They looked a lot better in the store than when I got them home. And so I'm just gonna work the stock down into there so I'm not bending or breaking the stem. And so these, you know, if I had known that they were going to look like this when I got them home, then I would not have purchased them, but they did look good in the store. And so I'm just using them almost as like a vertical filler flower and adding a little bit of a pop of color throughout the arrangement to lighten up the textures and colors. One more in here. Okay. So I think that I might add some of this yellowy stuff. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's wispy. Look how fun and wispy this is. It's like, I think this would be a lot of fun as a, a like a, a green flower um, or a green in and of itself and not just as an accent. So I may leave this, let's, My yellow lily got off center, so I recentered it. And I sort of just zhuzh it a little bit. As things fill in and see how I like the look. And I think she's done. <clears throat> so one of the things that you'll notice is that there are there's a little bit of um, there are a few leaves down there, and so I and the water is a little bit um, murky just from the um, stems being down in the water. And so what I'll probably do is um, take these, lift them out, and put them in this. Um, other jar. Let me see if I can do that here. So I'm going to hold it like a collard arrangement. 
and just drop it down in there and you can see it held its shape because the stems are interlaced like this. I'm gonna just uh, toss this water and refill it with something fresh and then remake uh, the arrangement. And this is uh, ready to set on an end table or in the entryway. It's a great way to reuse a candle jar and make a beautiful arrangement. I'm gonna spray a little bit of the crowning glory on it. It just needs a little bit of spritz like this. and you let it dry and then it will last for days and days. Add um, some fresh water. You can pour out the water and then add fresh water in every few days and that will keep your um, flowers looking great. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video of how to recycle a candle jar into a beautiful floral arrangement. Thanks everybody for watching.